So I roll onto the ward one day and this elderly lady takes one look at me and at the top of her voice yells, what's wrong with my doctor? <laughs> the whole ward falls silent. And from her bed, she continues to stare at me. I said, what's wrong with my doctor? All eyes are on me. Still silent because no one knows what to say. So I roll up towards her, reach out and take her hands. Well, I'm quite disorganised. <laughs> I'm very loud. And my legs don't really work. Now, how are you feeling today? I wasn't always disabled. I was normal, just like you. I was so normal that when my disabled mum tried to yell at me, I'd just run up some stairs so she couldn't chase me. I was so normal that when my youngest brother died, I baked cupcakes for three days straight. Because sugar solves everything, right? And then I went straight back to work. I was so normal that when my oldest brother died, right in the middle of my medical degree, I ran a half marathon for the British Heart Foundation. This was all totally normal, right? I started medical school with two degrees, two surviving brothers, and two functioning legs. Then I ran that half marathon, blissfully ignorant that the bendy joints I'd always thought of as an asset in my ballet classes were actually the sign of a syndrome so rare that most people can't pronounce it, let alone spell it. And it turns out, dislocating kneecaps, decidedly not normal. I damaged my knees beyond repair and went from running charity events for other people to crowdfunding my own wheelchair just so I could qualify. Still normal? There aren't many doctors in wheelchairs. And I've kind of become a novelty wherever I go. And you know what? It's bloody exhausting. <laughs> That's why I've become focused on being a role model. Get it? <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> I now work to get people like me into medicine and into work and into society. Now, I've been really lucky to have my own role model, my tenacious and frankly terrifying mother. <laughs> I grew up never thinking of disability as a weakness or as something that would stop me doing anything because disabled people were just people like my mum. Four children and a Cambridge law degree later, it was going to take more than some wonky knees to stop her daughter fulfilling her full potential. We need more role models. How do I know? Because I've seen the eyes of kids in wheelchairs light up when their doctor rolls in in a chair just like them. Suddenly, they're not the kid in the wheelchair anymore. They can grow up to be whatever they want to be. The next time they get a pitying look as they fight their way onto a bus or onto a stage at the BFI, <laughs> there will be a little spark inside of them that knows they have the potential to be so much more than that person sees. And I know that spark because my mum gave it to me. And now I work to pass that spark on. So how do we, all of us, become role models? Well, I'm trying a multi-pronged approach. My joints go in many directions and so am I. <laughs> so most important to me is my work 
with some amazing charities and organisations, including My AFK, My Action for Kids. Now, this amazing little charity, of which I'm an ambassador, works to provide mobility equipment for children with disabilities that they just wouldn't get on the NHS. So they can play, they can go on family outings, and they can be children. They also work with young people with intellectual disabilities to get them into the workplace. Now, at the moment, only 6% of people with intellectual disabilities are in work. Not because they don't want to be, but because they just don't have the training and the opportunities available. My AFK works to change that, and it's fantastic to be associated with them. Being disabled has changed how I speak to patients. And it's sure as hell changed how patients speak to me. One lady who'd had a really tough few years opened up to me in a way she'd never opened up to a doctor before. And at the end of our conversation, she leant towards me and she took my hands and she said, see, I know you get it, doc, because you're broken just like I am. Disabled people are an asset to the NHS because we get it. We have a unique lived experience that gives us a unique power with which we can support our patients. You want a wheelchair? I know all the tricks. <laughs> You live with a body that's in constant pain or that won't do what your brain is telling it to do. I understand. And what's more, I will believe you when you tell me about it. We need more people with disabilities in the NHS and so I work to support them. I've started an online support group called Wonky Teacups, where people with disabilities can talk about their problems, can suggest solutions, and we can just vent when we need to. I've worked with sixth form students desperate to get into medical school who've been told time and again that nowhere will ever take them. And I've worked with professional regulators to try and support disabled staff throughout their careers. But key to all of this is visibility because I'm not just a disabled doctor I've got so many other things I want to talk about and boy can I talk <laughs> I'm outraged that we have doctors so under supported and overworked and burnt out that they're now completing suicide I'm horrified that bullying is still a major issue in our so-called caring profession. Having lost a brother who was waiting for a second heart transplant, I desperately want more people on the organ donor register. None of these things have got anything to do with my disability, but I will pop up on TV and in newspapers talking about them, and yes, I will be in a wheelchair. I will be that disabled doctor that people will see talking about something completely unrelated and my difference will be normalised. I'll once again become normal, right? Except I never really was normal. <laughs> and here's the kicker, none of you are normal. You are all different, and we're all an asset to the NHS because of that. We are a beautiful, diverse collection of differences, and we need to start celebrating that. We need to stop trying to normalise all of our differences, and let's start celebrating them, because you know what? Our patients are not normal. They're all individuals too, and they need our humanity and our lived experiences. So just remember, ultimately, you don't need wheels to be a role model. Thank you.